Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Question Mark, and this is an early look at TIS 100. You might be wondering what the fuck that is. It sounds like a calculator. And it really, really does, because isn't the TS-100 an H... Or a Texas Instruments... No, it's a TI-100. It's a Texas Instruments calculator. Programmable calculator, is it not? I don't know. But this is a puzzle game that was created by the crazy people over at Zactronics. I didn't know this was a thing until I got an email from Zactronics with a review code for it, or a preview code, I guess, because it's early access. And the tagline in it is, the assembly programming puzzle game that you never asked for. And that is so true. I don't know anybody who's ever said, you know what would be great? A puzzle game where you have to program in assembly. If you don't know what assembly is, it is the second lowest form of computer language. <laughs> it, it really is. Like, you are dealing with, you know, the actual code that the processor does. It's not portable at all. <laughs> and this is just really screwed up. And you might be looking at this and being like, okay... Uh, this seems very odd. Uh, what's a segment? This is all just very, very computery. This is computery stuff. Computery. Yes, that'll 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 be the word that we're gonna use. Is computery, computer. And there is no tutorial. These are the tutorial levels. As you can see, I've only done three of them. Not especially great. Uh. I, I don't know what these statistics are when I look at these, but I don't have anybody else on my friends list apparently that has this game, which I or that has played these levels anyway. I'm not sure. I believe that this is your friends list statistics, although I'm pretty sure a couple people on my friends list has this have this game. I'm guessing they just haven't played it yet. Anyway, that neither here nor there. We're not going to worry about our stats because they're, they're meaningless. There is no tutorial. There is no explanation of what to do. Like, let's look at my first program. This is the first program. It tells you what you need to do. You need to read value from a read a value from in a, which in a they've got the list of values here. Uh, it goes down farther. You can't scroll it. That would be nice. And write the value to out A. Okay. Okay. So you'd look at this and be like, okay. Um, how do I get in A? Like, where do I start? So you look around and you look around and you find up at the top here, you've got in A with an arrow pointing down. Okay. Now, how the hell do I read that? You don't, we're going to assume that nothing is filled in here and we don't know what the hell we're doing. So you're like, okay, so how the hell do I read? Uh, there's no, like, help, there's no instructions, it's not telling you anything. If you hit escape, you can view the manual, which will handily open up right beside here. So, this is the TIS-100 Tessellated Intelligence System Reference Manual. So, you go through, and it is written like... Well, an old tech manual. If anybody's old enough that have that still have some really, really old, old tech manuals for like old, old machines, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm drawing a blank on a specific one. You'll notice that probably by now they have this ghosting where the pages that were stuck together have kind of smeared on each other, and this does too. It's little attention to detail that I'm noticing on this. And it's really quite cool, like system architecture here. I'm not sure if this is gonna show up in the video, but it says system architecture organization here <laughs> underneath the overview. If I looked really hard, it'd be really hard to tell because overview would be right here because these two pages glue together. <laughs> it's, it's just how that is. So we've got node 
So this one is stuck there. You can see all of that. You could probably, if you look really closely, you could see this box here, in here. It's just really impressive. It's really, really cool. The little tiny attention to detail that they've thrown in here. But that's neither here nor there. These are, this is the architecture. You actually have to learn the architecture of the TIS-100 as if it is an actual computer. Computer. So you've got ACC and BAK. These are essentially your internal registers. If you don't know what an internal register is, don't worry about it. They're just memory units. You can access ACC directly. There, there's no qualms about that. That is just a, a fully accessible. The BAK is a backup. You cannot address it directly, non-addressable. So you can put things in it, but you can't actually read it. The only way to get access to it is through a command called swap, which if you come down to the instruction set, you've got labels, no op, move, swap right here. So what this will do, this will swap your ACC and the BAK. It's just swap the values in them. It's great. But what if, how do you get things into BAK? Well, you use the save command. You want to add? Well, you type in add and then the source. And it'll add whatever the source is to ACC. So this can get pretty confusing, especially if you're, if you're used to, you know, your standard calculator. You, you add, you know, A plus B, whatever those values are. This, you're adding B. It's implied that it's being added to A. So you only mention what you're adding to or subtracting to, or I guess from in the case of subtraction. Lots of different commands. You've got your jump command, which is a jump command. It's an unconditional jump. You will jump to a label, kind of a go-to statement if you're familiar with higher level programming. You've got JEZ, which is uh, transfer execution conditionally. So you've got your conditional jumps, you know, which I believe, what is this? If it's not zero, or sorry, if it is zero, if it's not zero, if it's positive, if it's a negative, it's just, just so many different things. It gives a bit of an example of how they are, just as a manual would, a tiny little program here. This, this is what got me started. So move left ACC. Okay. So with my original setup, I had move up because we're grabbing from up to ACC. Great. And then I had move ACC right. So I had this in two commands. Well, that's not really efficient. I learned later that you can actually just not use the registers. You can just do a straight move from one to the other. So I moved up and then to the right. Move left to right. Move left down. Move up down. And that, that's all this is. This is just moving it around these different parts of the system to bypass these failed sections. That's pretty much what it is. You're basically reprogramming the computer so that it works and trying to bypass the malfunctioning components and then write down. So, And that's all this happens. So if we hit run, you'll notice that it goes and does what we expect it to do and gives you the outputs. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. <laughs> there's, there's nothing spectacular about it. It's all in how you do things. Like this particular one here, this differential converter. Let's, let's hop into what I've got here. This one I sat here for over half an hour trying to figure this out. And... I have so much redundant crap in this. I could totally streamline this so much better. 
but I was I was partially distracted. I was doing it on the weekend and I was doing something else while doing this, which never a good idea. So this one here, read values from in A and in B. So we've got in A and in B. Write in A minus in B to out P. So we've got out P, which has to be A minus B. But you've also got to write in B minus in A to out N, which is here. So you have to pass variables back and forth between these guys without overwriting things. And I just, I melted my brain. I could have probably done it a little differently if I'd used more registers or, you know, did some more work in these other ones. I don't know why I call these registers. These other sections, the other processor units, I guess. I don't know. But this works, you know. So I'm pulling in from up to ACC. I am saving it, which saves it to the backup. Let's actually step through this. So, and I'm also pulling in from B and saving it. Well, not saving it. I'm putting it to ACC. I am also then, so we'll pull this in. There we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm saving it in this one and I'm pushing it to the right. And this is pulling it from the left. These are blocking instructions. So if you move to the right, but you have nothing pulling, this will sit there and this will actually just block everything. And I actually came ran into that problem a couple times. So now you see how this one didn't move because it's blocking until this one does its thing, which there it did. So now this is going to save. That's where the no op is because I want to try to keep these in as much sync as possible. So now ACC here is 10. So now I'm going to move ACC to the left, but as you can see, it's not going to do anything until down here when I move right to ACC. So I'm saving and I am now moving ACC to the right, which blocks this one. So this is going to sub left, which is now going to subtract the in A from in B, producing the negative 16 that we need, which will then get passed down. So there we go. That That's shoved down. And this is still doing no op, and this is still sitting there trying to send the 10 back. And this one's still 26. So now this register here, or this, this particular module section, is now going to pull from the right. So now it's 10. That minus 16 is now erased from its memory, but it's already in, P, in the out N. And it'll show up on this side soon enough. Actually, it should be the next step. It'll show up. But we have now pulled in the 10 that we saved over here. And now we're going to push it over this way. So now we're going to sub right. So now we're going to subtract in B from in A. And that will produce 16, which is what we want. So now we're going to shove that down, and there they go. They start all over again at the top. Meanwhile, the 16 is just pushing down here. So it's not perfectly in line. The first 16 pops out first, or like the negative 16 pops out first, and then a quite a while later, the 16 pops out next. Now, this could most likely be done a lot better a whole lot better but yeah i am not i am not smart enough to figure that out apparently so we'll just let this run through the rest of it and you can see that it it goes pretty good it, it's not spectacularly fast but it does its thing and it's fairly compact like these guys are literally just move up down move up down move up down they, they don't do anything in particular but it can get you kind of stuck when you run into a part, like let's go back into this, 
where like, oh, what was I doing? I can't remember what it was, but I was running into a part that I was thinking, why is this blocking? That's why there was all these no ops. I I had no ops filling all of these for a while because it kept stopping on me. But that was because I had a blocking instruction. I, I was, oh, right. I was moving right. Move right. ACC. And move ACC right. Because for some reason, I moved it to the right. And I was thinking, this has to match. And I, it's just, just, just a mental flirt. That's a, that's what it is. It's a mental flirt. So yeah, there's uh, quite a few interesting things. And you can have, you know, three different. Similar to how um, Infinifactory was, where you could have three different solutions. So in this particular one, they want us to read a value from in. Okay. And write one. Oh. Okay. Okay. So So if the in value is greater than 0, we need to write a 1 to g. If it is equal to 0, we need to write 1 to e. And if it is or I had that reverse. If it's less than 0, 1 to g, greater than 0, 1 to l. Okay, so let's go down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to bring it in and just pass it around here because these registers are useless. So let's do left to ACC. And then let's actually do labels here. Start. And then... Uh, what do we want? It's less than zero, so jump less than zero. Uh, let's do... What should I call this? Let's just call it true. <laughs> I don't know if... Okay, true... Oh, that's just undefined variable. All right. So true. I should probably. Hmm. That might be. Let's call it Bob. Just screw it. We'll just call it Bob. <laughs> Okay, and then if it's less than zero, we are going to move one. Uh, down. Okay, and just because we can, we will move because those two are going to end up blocking. Uh, we're going to move ACC right. And at this point, we can pretty much just copy and paste this. So am I right? That one was less than... Uh, G is less than 0. E is equal to 0. So this would be equal to 0. And this one would be greater than zero. So this one's actually becoming... I don't need a comma there. Up, down. And this one is going to be right. So theoretically, in my mind, this should work. All right, so where am I screwing up? So this is, this is less than, and it's outputting one in 
All of them. All right. <laughs> so what we need to do on that point... No, oh, we gotta stop it. So let's just do J JMP end. End. Oh, and? We don't want this. <laughs> JMP end. End. I gotta do that. JMP and end. Okay. So what this should do is if this fails, actually. This might cause a problem, too. Yeah, yeah. It, that's screwing up. So we got negative 2 going in. So it is less than 0. So that is correct. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. So what I need to do here is move this. Order of operations, people. Order of operations. And that is why I don't program. <laughs> All right. So this. So negative two should be good. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> you guys are probably yelling at me because I got it wrong. Greater than, less than, still not going good. All right, where, what's, screwing, what's going on? Where am I screwing up? Okay. All right, so that that one worked. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, so yeah, I didn't read this last, if not true, write zero instead. Yeah, uh. Yeah, because this will only, that'll only run. Yeah. Because anything after that end will run when it jumps down there. So what we need to do is move zero down. That is a period, not a comma. And again, this is why I don't program. All right, there we go. It's always something simple. Always something simple that you screwed up on. And again, probably not the most efficient of, uh, well, things, but it worked. It really did work. And I could probably streamline it a bit more, but I, I'm... I'm I am not that particular about it. I really am not. It is definitely an interesting game. It 
it makes you think. It really does. And it kind of makes me want to go back and try to learn a little bit of assembly. I, I tried to do it when I was a bit younger. And just, pff, I gave up. I just gave up. I, I really didn't even try, let's be honest. I, I looked at it a bit. I wrote a few debug things, and that was about it. So... It almost makes me want to go back, but I just, I remember it being like, well, this. <laughs> you can't do a lot in a short period of time. It takes a long time to do really anything when writing an assembly. That That's what I remember. But this is pretty cool. It really is pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to end this here. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next time.